I will figure out a way to keep them and have some fun with them. Okay, you can do whatever you want behind closed doors. Here you go. Thank you, doctor, <laughs> for your time. What was it? True. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, accident? Bidding War Prank Ivy decided to play a very pricey prank on Jared by initiating a very intense bid war. Jared's been perfect time to mess with him. Jared, who's pretty intent on purchasing the locker, falls for Ivy's trick. Two. Wait for it. Yeah, 21 and 2, tail 23. Yeah. I got 23, 24, 25, number 26 now. Wait for it. 28, 27, 28, yes. 29, 29. Now's a good time to drop it on, Jared. Yeah. 3, I got 3,000, whatever 3,100 nope. nope. wants. With the locker now in his possession, Jared and Brandy head down to check out their new acquisition and hopefully the valuable items that come with it. You can look at this stuff while we're pulling it out. Tell me if it's worth keeping or if it's trash. Brandy manages to find a very high-tech contraption from the first set of items Jared and his friends brought out. It's an offshore division tracking system. Maybe they tracked fish. Yeah, there's an anchor on it and it says it's a it's tracking some, system. Yeah, it's some kind of tracking system. It definitely looks scientific. To get a handle of what the tracker's worth, Brandy and Jared head down to an aquarium to meet with marine life researcher Josh Jones. The gizmo. Okay, so you brought something cool for me. Josh immediately identifies the item the duo brought in. An acoustic tracking system. Right here, you attach an underwater microphone mm -hmm. and you take another device that makes a sound, makes it like a chirp or a ping. Brandy and Jared get a free lesson on how the item works. What was it? Chirp! <laughs> So that little thing, the pinger, makes a sound. The hydrophone that's plugged in here receives it, and then this unit tells you how far away it is. After taking a look at the set, Josh notices a very vital piece of the item is missing. You use it to listen to sounds of animals. Whales and dolphins and porpoises, they all make sounds. That fish makes sounds, they make grunty sounds and farty sounds. Oh, you can listen to a fish. Factoring in all the elements of his evaluation, Josh manages to make a rough estimate of what the item's worth. A system like this, oceanographers can pay upwards of 5,000 bucks. Five grand? Not for this system. The newer one. Okay. <laughs> What's this one worth? Maybe 300 bucks. Suction cups. Dave and his gang head out to take a look at the contents of his newly acquired storage unit. Start lining up all the boxes on both sides here, guys, like we normally do. It's already 50 bucks right there on the bike. Everybody was a little bit scared about everything and being in bags, but any professional would know they just ran out of boxes and went and got bags. Things get off to a good start, as Dave gets a complete set of furniture that might get him the capital he invested. Commercial freezer, that's probably worth a hundred bucks. And then you have the chest, the dresser, the mirror, you have a headboard, two nightstands. That's probably 400 bucks for the bedroom set. While going through the boxes, Dave finds an object that catches his interest. Uh-oh, what the hell is that? Damn. Hey, Steve, you got any idea what these things are? Dave calls in his colleagues to check out the item in question. For breastfeeding? Or it could be a prosthetic for a mold. I think anything that might have to do with boobs, we have to investigate a little farther. To find out more about the item, Dave meets with a double certified plastic surgeon. Okay, so let me tell you what these are. They marketed these as an alternative to breast augmentation. They're used to grow breasts. So you actually attach them to your breast. Dr. Cat, who proves herself to be well-versed and knowledgeable about the item, tells Dave all she knows about the contraption. Where's the vest? I didn't know it came with a vest. There's a vest that actually goes over them to hold them in place. Can you put a, put a bra over the top of them? I mean, in theory, I guess you could. The doctor reveals Dave might have missed a very vital part of the set. That's why the vests have a pocket for the battery. Oh, okay. I mean, did you test it? Does it work? I really don't have any idea how it works. Okay, well, I guess we can test. After a little test to confirm if the item still functions, Dave gets to hear what the item might go for if he were to sell them. Retail something new like this, you could probably get $900, but as is used, and I mean, there's no vest, I would say, at the most, maybe $400. Having heard the estimated worth of the item, Dave, being the villain he is, decides to creep out the poor doctor. Maybe I'll figure out a way to keep him and have some fun with him. Okay, you can do whatever you want behind closed doors. Here you go. Thank you, doctor, for your time. <laughs> You're welcome. Drag Queen Accessories. Kenny gets himself a very easy bargain in the form of a $25 locker unit. Let's see here. They got some glass right here, boy. 
Picture frame, blast out. Kumbaya, if I give you about 10 bucks. Kenny gets right to work looking through the contents of the huge pile of wares, hoping to find treasure. They got a bunch of trains in here. I said, right now, this box is probably about $10 until you fix them up, refurbish them. Amidst the huge pile, Kenny finds himself a sewing machine that could net more than four times the amount he paid for the locker. It's a damn sewing machine. Nice, old-fashioned. Yeah, I could do some Kenny do-its on him. I'll sell this for 400 right here. After a lengthy period of searching, Kenny decides to check the boxes that were stored in the locker, only to come across a very curious sight. This is the first neat box we didn't got since we've been here. And what we got here? You got some wigs if you want to hide, disguise yourself as somebody. In the box, Kenny finds several women's wear and a pair of silicone bosoms. Look what we got here. Oh man, I don't even know if I could show this on the TV. We got ourselves a set of boobies. Kenny decides to head over to meet Johnny Reinhold, a drag queen, to get a price on the items. You think your big money makers are gonna be the booby bib and the hip pads. All right, Johnny the Magnificent, can you uh, give me a price on this whole start off kit? After evaluating all the items Kenny brought over, Johnny gives Kenny a price. After looking through everything in this box, I think that it's worth $225. Yo, queen! Well, thank you so much, John. Thank you, Kenny. Appreciate it. Jared's big mess up. Jared manages to get himself into a whole lot of trouble when his attempts to back into a better parking spot lead to a very bad dent in Brandy's car. <laughs> Dave, who is in close proximity, decides to rub salt in the wound by heckling Jared. <laughs> Yay! Oh, accident? Hey, where'd you get your driver's license, Swami? Brandy, who is not finding the whole situation funny, gets out of the vehicle to assess the damage. Brandy. Hey, Brandy. I hit a pole. To fix up Brandy's surly mood, Jared decides the best course of action is to get his hands on a locker and hopefully get enough profit to fix his mistake. He's down three, three, but I'm two, I got three. Going once, going twice, gotta go guess what? Nah, it's on its way, Jared. You got it for 300 big bucks. This locker is definitely gonna make us enough to fix Brandy's car. Or I'm screwed. Jared successfully gets a storage unit for a very nice price, but manages to draw Brandy's ire for making another mistake. Hey, up, go a little far, now go back. What? Back! Aw, oh, you broke the radio. Luckily for Jared, an item they found in the locker was worth enough money to get the bumper fixed. Everything looks great. I think 300 all day. 300 bucks? That's great. I told you it was worth money. I told you that was a good unit. <laughs> great. Now Jared can buy me a new bumper. Let's get the out of here. 